Hey motivators, this is Gates with Moto Me Trucking and I wanted to reach out and talk to you today because I keep getting this question, all these questions about um, know, positivity and flexibility and um, you know living this uh, moto trucker life on the road, right? Living a trucking life on the road that um, brings us joy and passion and health even um, and that is something that we have actually accomplished over the last year and now that uh, we want to start um, seeing if we can harness in a certain way to um, get others to do it um, we're of course not the only ones doing it out on the road but I don't think anybody's talking about it enough. We talk a lot in the trucking industry about um, how hard the lifestyle is um, and nobody's really talking about the solutions <laughs> of those issues or at least how we can endure and struggle through them and actually come out better on the other side. Um, so. You know, what Lenora and I have done is studied personal development and the science of success. And we've um, applied that to our lives. I should, I should speak for myself. I've applied that. Lenora can tell you her, her story later. But I've applied that to my life um, in, a, in a very regimented, um, intentional manner for about the last six years. Um, I really had a life-altering change of state and, and mind at about 2015 and really just chose to take my life on a different path. Um, and I, we can talk more about that later, but <clears throat> what, what came with that was this um, intentional seeking of knowledge um, that I wasn't taught before like when I started finding all this personal development stuff I was really really sort of flabbergasted at the amount of um, practical skills and applications and understandings and, and knowledge that there is out there that we've already accumulated and thought of as a society um, and that can be easily applied to our lives and um, wasn't ever taught to me or wasn't taught in a, in a way that I retained or that um, was, was palatable to me maybe at a young age. Um, and I think that, that school and like education sort of fails in, the, in this space to, to teach you the, the very practical skills of understanding, you know, self-awareness and, um, you know, responsibility and um, I guess a true path to figuring out um, what it is you want to do with your life um, and why you want to do it or where you're called to, to serve. And um, finding those things, or maybe I found them right in my perfect time, but, but finding that for me is, is still a continuous process. Um, but what I was able to do was apply it to my life where I was at. I was able to take these little golden nuggets, if you will, of practical application of living a good life um, and, and tweak my mindset and change my behaviors and my habits in order to bring fulfillment and joy and love and passion into my life. And there are people who can do that no matter what, people who can, you know, be like Nelson Mandela was in prison for years, um, I think like 27 years or something like that. Um, 
I, ju I just recently watched his biographical movie, and you know, it's amazing that he can be in prison for that long to be, you know, tortured to those struggling conditions and still find, you know, love and humility and forgiveness of his enemy, right? So there are these grand people that we look to in humanity to teach us the best ways to live. Um, often these are very um, prominent spiritual teachers or, you know, saints or um, just people who have uh, walked a, a higher consciousness of, of life, you know, these uh, philosophical teachers um, in Plato and Socrates. Um, there are artists like, um, you know, Leonardo da Vinci, who have mastered many realms. Um, anyway, these are all mentors, right? They're all people that we can seek um, to to find those golden nuggets of um, universal principles that lead to a happy healthy life and lifestyle and that can be lived literally anywhere by anyone right because it's all based on just human consciousness not um, environmental um, outside uh, struggles like um, things pressing in on you from the from the environment okay so people want to know the habits, people want to know about willpower, people want to know how to maintain a healthy habit, like, oh, I started eating healthy on the truck, but then, uh, you know, I didn't, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't keep it up, or I, I tried to start working out on truck, and, and it's just too hard, or, uh, you know, all the struggles, I can't sleep, there's, there's several things about the trucking lifestyle that are um, different and very hard. Um, but what I what I'd like to submit to you today is the the baseline for any of that change to take place, and in and in fact, science is you know psychology and neuroscience is proving that um, happiness in general <laughs> is this sort of middle ground. Um, and the baseline to all of these changes, lifestyle habits and seeking of the good life really come from this, this basic understanding and universal principle that all of your growth comes from change. Um, all that you want to accomplish, everything that is struggle or unease for you right now is easily, maybe not easily, but is that you are capable of overcoming through change. Um, and often what, oh man, that was a big bump. Often what I see is that people are truly unhappy or angry with their life but they are so tight fist and closed minded to change that they can never come out of it. What I'm submitting to you today, and there are many books on this, um, is that you have to be willing, the very first step is that you have to be willing to understand that you can rewire your brain, 
that you can make a change, that indeed there is hope for a better future and that you can walk towards it in a very intentional way, that your free will, the, the basic freedom that you have as a truck driver in the United States is available to you and 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 you you can make the choice to do something different you can make the choice to let go of this sort of black and white picture of life of holding on to these these deep-seated dogmas if they aren't serving you I, I want you to know that there is a space for you to start to plant a seed in your mind that wherever you are, if you don't want to be there, you can change. There is zero walks of life that don't have examples of people coming from extreme struggles or extreme, you know, wonderful conditions, you know, whatever, that's, it's kind of subjective what people uh, view as success in riches and power or happiness and joy or whatever it is for you. There is an example of somebody who didn't have it and now has it. That in itself is proof that you also if you don't have it, you can have it. Life is working for you and in fact is heading toward a better and better place. We'll get into more of that another time, but again, I need you to grab a hold of this one belief because it all starts here with just just you know the, the faith of a mustard seed <laughs> okay just this inkling of hope that things can be different for you and you can lead a life that is fulfilling not only to yourself, but in fact is, is impactful and helpful to others. Um, and there is real joy and passion and love that comes with that. And I don't want to go on too long, but you can choose to live in the darkness. The darkness is, is, is always there, and it pulls us back. I struggle with it just the same as you, and I, I've had deep, dark struggles in my life. Um, but what is bad and negative is there right alongside what is good and positive in the world. And the beliefs that you hold in your mind literally shape your destiny. So um, choosing to say, ah, oh, the world's going to hell in a handbasket and everything's terrible. You know, we get angry at uh, the mass media and our government or uh, our spouses or whatever is going wrong for you today. There is a belief on the flip side of that coin that actually it's all going right for you. It's all going right for you because herein lies all these opportunities for growth and for change. And you now know, ugh, this sucks. Okay, let's do something different. Let's change something. Let's shape something. Whether it's a mindset change, a physical change, a location change, 
whatever it is, it starts with that one little seed that, hey, I don't want to be here and I want to get out. I want to do something else. And you can, I swear to you, you can. I know I, I've been there where it feels like you're just stuck. Um, and, and often it's even worse for like the people who are in that middle place. I hate the middle place where you're just sitting in your own shit and you got a dirty diaper, right? But, <laughs> but you, you know, well, I could probably crap in it again and things be all right. I can sit in it a little longer because, see, things aren't, aren't bad enough for you to want to make a change. But they're not really good enough that you feel happy and fulfilled in life either. That middle place, oh, it's so dangerous. It's so dangerous, the middle place, because you stay stuck in this place of essentially um, unhappiness. And it's not contentment because um, we can be content with our life in a, in a good way. It's, it's desperation. It's resignation. Remember what Thoreau said, the masses of men lead lives of quiet desperation. What is called resignation is confirmed desperation, meaning that most people are just sitting around feeling sorry for themselves mostly. <laughs> uh, I'm going to stop this here. I feel like I've gone off task. But what you should know, again, you can change. And we can do it. We can do this industry better. We can do it more healthy. We can do it without tossing our pee bottles out the window, without trashing up the interstates with a respect and personal hygiene about us and one another. We can be well, and all shall be well. We can be well, and we can take this rejuvenated spirit and and push it into our customers, you know, and and maybe we'll show up to a shipper receiver and they won't be jerks to us. Hey, because we're not being jerks, right? But it starts with us, and that's at least what I'm trying to do and what I hope you all will do. 99% of you are, you know, going to go back to your lives and be angry and, and desperate. But if I can reach even one of you, that is my intention. We can do this differently. This does not have to be the job that pushes you into death, death of spirit, death of joy, death of health. You can live out here and you can live a good life. Be well and stay motivated. I'll talk to you again soon.